This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi, it's Kiffin Low Bates here, and this is video four in a series on centralization and decentralization and organization, in fact. And I've had a couple of shots at recording this one, and it's turned out to be quite a difficult one because what I want to talk about is personality cults within organizations. Because people like a leader, and they like a strong leader, and a strong leader or a visible leader in a particular project is a great marketing asset. So if you take, for example, Elon Musk, he's a bit of a loose cannon, and I'm sure his lawyers and the board occasionally despair of his antics. But from a marketing perspective for Tesla, it is brilliant to have him as the company leader because he gives the company so much exposure. And you see that with other companies. So, for example, Steve Jobs is no longer with us, but he will always be the face of Apple. And he still, beyond the grave, sets the company mission and tone by the way that he ran and organized and structured the company. Now, when you have a decentralized uh, project, you have a problem if you have a strong visible leader because that acts towards centralization and it kind of starts to defeat the purpose of the project at hand. And we've seen a number of interesting ways around that uh, in the blockchain world, namely how to have a, a charismatic, strong leader from a marketing perspective without that leader actually dominating the project. And the first one, of course, that springs to mind is Bitcoin, where you have uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Nobody knows who he or she is. They exited from the project very, very early on, and yet the words that were left behind um, continue to influence the way that the decentralized project proceeds. And in that sense, Nakamoto reminds me a bit of the character Harry Seldon in Isaac Asimov's Foundations series, where the character who sets everything in motion and kind of is an invisible hand guiding everything actually is not present uh, beyond the first chapter of the book. So it's a fascinating read if you haven't read it. Um, I believe they made it into a television series as well for those of you who don't like to read books. Um, another example I can think of is Vitalik Buterin. You know, here you have a, uh, a founder of a project, um, but he seems to kind of um, avoid the risk of becoming a serious leader of the project. He's obviously a valued voice. Um, but he does this by turning up in a unicorn and UFO t-shirts or dressing in a big bear suit when he goes to a convention. So in that sense, he kind of takes the seriousness off his position. And I don't know whether this is calculated or it's just his character. But again, I think it's a, a brilliant marketing ploy whilst helping to maintain the decentralization of the project in question. And so really the question then is, well, what is the conclusion to this video? And I think the issue here is that it boils down to the nature of humans in society to have a strong leader, someone they can look up to or turn to in order to provide guidance. But the flip side of that is that you end up with power in the hands of a small group or a single person, which of course can turn out to be a very, very bad thing. And political events recently are showing us some, yet again, some of the downsides of having a, uh, a strong leader in place in a particular community. So uh, anyway, uh, not a focused point in this uh, video. It's more an observation again. And in fact, this whole series on centralization and decentralization is an observation and an attempt at an analysis rather than trying to come up with any definite direction or conclusions that we should take. It's more a consider this before you make a decision rather than here's the roadmap map of what you should do. I hope you found it interesting. I think I'm going to wrap it up um, now and I'll see you all in the next video soon. Bye for now.